In this video I'm gonna share a crazy story of how I moved to Mexico, almost died. I found a girlfriend, we flew in a DJ from Malta to Mexico and organized six crazy parties in just eight days. No mames way. Dakota. Go. Burrito, burrito. Coca-Cola. Hablas español? So after I finished my last challenge, which was to learn how to play the drums in two weeks, I needed to get the next thing off my bucket list. And what better thing to choose next than to start organizing crazy parties during a lockdown. Judge me all you want, but my granny used to say that successful people never choose the easy way, but they do find a third world country where you can get away with things. So step number one. Fly to Mexico, but don't go alone. Take your best friend with you and make sure you can outrun him in case something goes wrong. Step number two, while in Mexico, find a hot girlfriend who can speak Spanish. In case something gets heated with the cartel, she can bail you out. Also make sure that she's crazy enough to catch a knife for you or a watermelon. Good correction. <laughs> and the last step is to find a cool DJ. At this point, we were in the south of Mexico in a beach paradise called Masunte. And as you can see, there weren't many DJs around, but we did manage to see Mexican Jesus just chilling at the beach, contemplating whether he should split the waves or not. He didn't. Anyways, next we headed to Puerto Escondido, where I thought it's a great idea to go for a morning swim at Playa Cicatella at 6 a.m. in the morning. This is the actual photo of me going in, and as you can see, there are no waves. But literally two minutes later, the waves completely changed and the current just pulled me out so far that I knew that I was in trouble. I tried swimming out, but the waves were so crazy. They were spinning in one place over and over again. Lucky for me, there was one surfer at the beach. It took him like 40 minutes to get to me and in total I was in the water for more than an hour. By the way, these were the waves just a few minutes after I got out. If I would have been in here, I would have been dead. I still don't believe in guardian angels, but I do believe in surfers now. Thanks. And what is the first thing you do after you have a near-death experience? You Google stuff. Playa Cicatella is the home of one of the heaviest and most dangerous waves in the world. And it's not very safe for swimmers. The waves can reach heights of 40 feet, which is like 12 meters. And I was like, hell no, that's impossible. And Lord behold, I was wrong and Google was right. After seeing this footage, I realized how lucky I was to be alive. And I guess the moral of the story is, know where you swim in Mexico. Anyways, after that we decided to hitchhike to the airport and just take the next flight anywhere. However, it was such a small airport that it only had one flight to Mexico City. There we thought it's a great idea to get a matching the two after knowing each other for two weeks and then fly to a place that we never even heard of. Chetumal. Turns out there was a reason why we never heard of it. So we left and took a bus from Chitumal to Playa del Carmen. Playa is a sweet spot between Cancun and Tulum with great nightlife. So when we arrived, we just started to party. But let's call it market research. We partied on rooftops, apartments, clubs, boats, beach and jungles. And in one of those parties, we met this guy, Yusef. He invited us to his place because he said he wants to play us a really, really good DJ. A DJ from Malta called DJ Ruby. When we got there, Yusef played one of Ruby's sets from YouTube. It was almost four hours long and it was, it just blew our minds. Plus the visuals were absolutely insane. We were so blown away that we just decided that we gotta get this guy into Mexico. So we just wrote to him on Instagram and straight up asked if he was willing to fly to Mexico. And he said, bro, I would be on the first flight to Mexico. And I said, I will make it happen. And he said, I have a feeling you will. Then we called him just to make sure he wasn't kidding. These past two, three years I've been building my name up. And everything just clicked. We were just massive fans who wanted to see him play live and he had been stuck in Malta with no gigs for months. And it got so bad that he was just living in his studio playing for gummy bears and then he ate them. And we got to work and we made a to-do list called how to fly a random stranger DJ to Mexico and start organizing parties with zero experience. Step one, get the flights from Malta to Mexico. It's loading. Tickets have been issued. DJ Ruby is coming to in Mexico. Mm, mm, mm. I'm so excited. Next up was to find a bigger apartment because Ruby was going to be staying with us. So we went apartment hunting. Right on the first day, we managed to find a perfect place with three bedrooms and two bathrooms. Check. 
Now we needed to find our first booking so Ruby wouldn't fly here for nothing. But also honestly we don't know what we're doing because we've never booked an international DJ or, or done any anything of this kind. However, as we had been parting our asses off and doing loads of market research, we were already pretty well connected. We managed to get a meeting with the manager of a local rooftop club and it went extremely well and we got it. First booking, check. Eight hours later. We had a bunch of meetings and we got two more bookings. It's much easier than I thought though. I'm gonna make some money here. It turned out that we were a damn good team together and in a few days we managed to get six bookings. So things were going great, but then something weird happened to my girlfriend. She was sleeping like a mummy and acting like a demon. I to go out for a nice dinner. <laughs> when I'm Can you shut the f up? I had never seen her like that before and I tried my best to be supportive. <laughs> But nothing worked, so we just got back to work. Okay, we're trying to figure out the prices for the event, how we're gonna sell the tickets, the pre-sale. As you can see, this one over <laughs> here is a little bit stressed out because... It's just because time is ticking. You don't have a watch. Time is ticking. <laughs> She's PMSing, so... I need you for this! We need to work on this. No, I'm doing this for... He is getting distracted. Well, I'm trying off. to make this happen. You. <laughs> As I didn't know what to do, I decided just to give her some space and let her be. You're so irritating. So if you had one message to tell the world through my upcoming insanely popular YouTube channel, what would it be? I have been by his side through everything. And will be. Oh. I hope we're not like broken up before this video gets public. I know, that'll be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? This is what I have to put up with. Next step was to promote the events. And things got very real when Ruby announced his Mexican tour dates on his Instagram and his website. Go. DJ Ruby, Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Like. And all of a sudden we understood that we are his Mexican tour managers. Like a small idea that we started is actually turning into an official tour for him in Mexico, which is... Now that things were growing way bigger than planned, I had to crunch some numbers and set some goals. Goal number one, promote DJ Ruby's music. Goal number two, make money, which means don't lose money. And goal number three, do not get murdered. Hashtag Mexico. Uh, there are some cartel problems. Some people are getting their heads cut off, but I'll tell you later about that. Ruby was arriving in two days. So of course the next morning when I woke up, I was sick and felt like garbage. Um, God hates me. Ruby no. is here in one and a half days no. and I just literally cannot be sick. I did what I always do. I prayed to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and two days later I was healed. I also took some pills and medication. So it's DJ Ruby arrival day. So we made him a little um, DJ Ruby funvelope which includes some um, some uh -huh. and of course we got a little Jose Manuel. Mm. We rented a car, but there was some mix-up, so we got this sexy little beast. It has four doors, but the leg space in the back is <laughs> amazing. Uh, gonna go pick up DJ Ruby from the airport! <laughs> and by the way, this is the guy who introduced DJ Ruby to us. Yusef from Morocco! We arrived to the airport and we were all so excited, like little kids waiting for Santa Claus. And then it happened, he finally arrived. I mean, I warned him. Oh, this is insane! Yeah. So wait, yeah. oh, this is the crew. You. What's your name? Yusuf. 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 He's real. Now things got really real. We had a fun ride back talking about music, how we met and everything. But as soon as we got home, we got straight back to work. We are finalizing the flyer for this Sunday, his first gig in Bali. And thank God that Ruby was also a graphic designer because I was making posters in Canva. Anyways, and then it turned out that he does video editing as well. Slash videographer, slash awesome slash human being. Yeah. Then we made 500 flyers to put around the city. Give this guy a flyer. Oh, do you want to come fly with us? Yes, yes. Two flyers down, uh, 498 to go. Our hard work and promotion finally paid off because we sold our first pre sale tickets. 400 pesos. <laughs> first ever. Mm. Promo done. Which meant just one thing. Next up was our first party, so make sure you like and subscribe for part 2. Thanks! 
In part two, I get two kisses from Ruby. My girlfriend starts crying and forgets her bra. My best friend becomes a farmer. Trashy boy jumps in the water and Ruby goes to the beach. Oh, and also plays some music. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.